Okay, you can make me co host now. All yeah, right. Okay. There you go. Thanks. Hello. Hello, how you doing? Good. I'm still eat I'm eating, so I have my video off. I know this is during uh everyone's uh dinner time. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Hi, good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> I said, you look familiar, Donna. I think I saw you in another class. Yeah, <laughs> you sure did. About a week or 10 days. Yep. <laughs> Some people in here. We'll give it a little bit of time here. How are people doing this evening? Good. Yeah, good. I know you're, some of you are eating uh, your dinners. <laughs> I was working in my garden. Oh yeah. Yeah. Today. Well, that's nice. You had a good. You had good weather, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Uh, let's see. A few more here to come in. Sherry, what's your background there? I don't know. Some kind of bush. <laughs> it's a picture <laughs> I got offline. <laughs> it looks like the one I have outside in the yard, so it might be a hydrangea tree. It's nice. Yeah. I have, I have two of Whatever them. Whatever it to, is, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I have two of these sort of like that in front of the house. They told me they were bushes, and I grew uh -huh. them, and now they're trees. I have hmm. to cut them back every year. Way back. <laughs> well, because it's art, it's because it's art tonight. I'll throw in some a little bit of color. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, nice. That's just a little bit there. Who is that? You mean the artist? Yeah, yeah. Is it an artist or is it just the artist is me? You. Oh. There you go. Did you there do that go. on your on your iPad? Yeah, iPad Pro with Procreate. All right. When are you going to do the class on that? I'm going to drop in on your class and do a little demo, I think. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't you, uh, did I, I sent you an email. Didn't we I? talked about it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think I gave you a date. Is that, I think it's this Saturday, isn't it? I think maybe. Um, yeah. If you can yeah. do it, that'd be, that would be great. Yeah. 10 o'clock my time. Yep. That sounds great. Cool. All right. Cause I know I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what way art is, it's all about process. That's right. I'm more abstract. <laughs> me too. Well, that's me too, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> I have to work on doing the the you know the faces and all this stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> this is too much. All right. All right. I don't hear any more beeping coming in here, so I guess we should get moving here. And start talking about some art tonight. Some more uh, women in art history. So I want to welcome everyone to get set up. We're seniors teaching seniors about technology. We also have social hours. Tonight we're going to be talking about famous women in art history. Number two, we have an, we had an early, another session of this one, and now we're, we just I they're falling out of the woodwork. I keep finding more and more of these women. So it's nice to uh, talk about them. Uh, and I'm your guide uh, tonight. I, my name is Donna. I was in the IT industry for over 30 years. I enjoy helping people get over their fears of technology. And we are Get Set Up. Uh, if you can get a, re a request recording of the class afterwards by emailing help at getsetup.io. 
And if you're joining us on live stream, welcome everyone. Uh, the best way though, for us to get to know you is to come register and join our classes live. Uh, get Set Up does not promote any products in any way, no kickbacks, anything like that. So tonight we're just gonna talk about some more famous women in art. Talk about what you know, is famous, what makes them famous and, and um, what their lives were like. It's a little different for the women artists than for the guys in history. For sure. Does anyone have a, fa a favorite uh, fem uh, woman artist that they love? Yes. I do. <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> Lebrun. Oh, yes. Yes. We talked about her in the first session. I know, and she's one of my favorites. How about Hilma Af Klint? Hilma no. Af I yeah. think. I think. <laughs> Put yes. her in chat. Put her in chat because maybe okay. it's someone. <laughs> Maybe it's someone I need to add to my list. I don't know. My list just keeps growing. Anyone else? All right. What I'm going to do, actually, before we start with her, let me, uh, I'm going to play you, uh, you a little video here about women in art.
Now there are some names in there that I didn't know. <laughs> it just it's keep popping up everywhere. That's interesting because I was uh, in my research. Um, they uh, one of the things they mentioned was that um, out of all the artwork in all the museums across the world, only two percent have women that are showing on the walls right now. That's pretty stunning, you know. <laughs> And, then, and when you look at modern art right now that's going on, it's about 50-50 as far as men and women being involved in modern art. So it's kind of interesting to see how the restrictions that were put on women in the earlier times, um, not being able to go to art schools because the art schools taught, you know, the human anatomy and that type of thing. So it really did keep a lot of women out of it. And for a lot of these early women, let's talk about the first one. Lavanita Fontana, 1552, was born. She, they, they think she was really the first truly professional pro-woman artist in the Western Europe. She not only did portrait. Now, at this point in time, in the 15, 1600s, you know, the women, women could not go to the art schools and because of the, they couldn't, you know, see a, a male nude in class. So um, usually the women just did portraits, but um, she did mythology and religious painting, which is really unusual um, to get involved in that type of thing. Her father, of course, was an artist. This is kind of a theme for these the ladies in the 1500s, 1600s. You have to have a dad or an uncle <laughs> or a grandfather, someone who has an art studio to learn the, you know, the, the trade. Um, unfortunately, that's how it was back then. But she did quite well. Uh, she trained with her dad. And then her family moved uh, to Rome in 1603. Uh, but uh, they were invited by the Pope. You know, her, her uh, paintings were, um, you know, pretty well liked. And she did portraits um, for a few. Of, uh, actually, she did a, um, a she did a. Uh, Pope Gregory, she did a portrait of him. Um, and she actually worked at the Vatican as the uh, portrait person to do portraits. So she definitely um, established herself. Let's take a look at some of her work here. I like the, uh, the collar. Nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, she had over a hundred works of art. This isn't we. I don't know what's going on in this. <laughs> <We're wolf. laughs> I'm not too sure exactly what this one's about. Um, although the I like the print on the the clothes. <laughs> I'm not too sure what the what's going on there. Uh, but this There's is one of her famous work. People grow grow hair. It's probably that person she painted probably had a medical condition. That's yeah. where they think werewolf legends may have come from. Oh, there. that's true. Yeah, it could be, and they just don't have any, you know, medicine for it. That might you be. Know, it. It's like yes. a formal, I mean, they just they grow hair on their body. I mean, they're normal <laughs> otherwise, but that's probably how she really looked. I don't remember the name of the condition. Yeah. It's not very common. But right. Yeah. Cause, I mean, because you can see, it, it, you know, I think that you're right. Because look at around here, there's no hair. So I think it is something like that. Yeah. We're just not used to seeing it. You know, here's another one. This one's beautiful. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, you know, this is a, a portrait of a lady with a lap dog. You see the dog there sitting there, you know, I'm, but he just yeah. blends right in mm -hmm. uh, to the fabric. That. I couldn't see it till you said it. Yeah, it's one of those, you know, those puzzles. They say, you know, can you see the object? Yeah. <laughs> Find the lap dog. <laughs> <laughs> so she had like over 100 works of art. And, but she only signed like 32 of them. Um, so they don't know what happened to some of her artwork. So this is another famous one of hers, the self-portrait at the um, cla clavichord or harpsichord, whatever this um, is here. Donna, I was just able to log in. Can you tell me who this is? This is 
Lab, lab in that. No, sorry, lab. Lab in here. Thank you, Fontana. Yeah, uh, and she was uh, 1552 to 1614. This is who she is, uh, Christine. Thank you, Donna. No problem. Let me get some more of hers here. And they believe she was, uh, like we I'd mentioned earlier, that she possibly was the first woman artist to paint a female nude, which would be different. I like this one. Saint Peter this one here's in the Uffizi. Boy, the Florence. Detail, her detail is unbelievable. Yeah. Look at the back in the back, the landscape in the back here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, look at the fabrics. I mean, the way she does the, oh. it looks amazing. This one is stunning. You're gonna have to take a good look at this one. The um, those the uh, collars, they're they look transparent. Mm -hmm. And there's the dog again, by the way. <laughs> oh, can there's anyone find? I was gonna say, can anyone find the bird? Yeah, yeah. Right that's <laughs> what show. I was gonna. She, <laughs> was she? Did she make puzzles back then? <laughs> You could have done a puzzle book. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I know that bird is blending into. Is there anything else? Like this one? All right, the kid over here on the left is holding. What's that? It looks like a dish with some snacks. Mm -hmm. I had to look real closely at that oh, one to make sure it wasn't another animal. <laughs> and just to show you, this is another picture that um, she did a portrait of a noble woman. <laughs> And I wanted, I got up close to the picture so you could really see this detail. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's stunning. Mm -hmm. Now she had a contemporary, uh, Guido Rennie. And some of her works they believe possibly got, you know, if she didn't sign it, probably ended up under his um, list of works. Mm. All right. Next one up is Isabetta mm -hmm. Serrani. This is 1638 to 1665. She was Baroque painter and printmaker. Now, she had a suspicious death at the age of 27. Uh, she did establish the Academy for Women Artists. She was a living ed legend. People actually came to see her paint. She was very, very successful. She had a huge funeral. She supported herself. I heard her dad did, he did have a studio. Uh, in 1654, her dad got sick and died and he, she took over the studio and she worked with it from then. Now she died suddenly in, in 1665. It was suspicious because she, she had a maid servant. Her the na servant's name was Lucia Tolomelli. Was charged with poisoning her. Mm. <laughs> Put on trial, and it was suspicious because Lucia wanted to Lucia wanted to end her service with the family. She had asked to be let go um, just days before. <laughs> Sarani ended up dead. That's an old story. Okay. <laughs> hmm. So the funny thing, this is where it gets funny. So the charges got dropped on the trial. And what they said at the time, that she died at an age regarded as young indeed for death, but hopelessly late for marriage. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> an old maid. She was an old maid. Yes. Hopelessly <laughs> late for marriage. I love it. She was only 27. They needed CSI <laughs> to investigate. They needed yeah, no something. Wonder, yeah, no wonder it's she like, died. She didn't get married. That's right. They just said, <laughs> oh, well, she should die anyway. She's not married. 
I guess if she couldn't tell she could leave. I guess there was no two week notice back then, right? I guess I know up. really. Just give notice. You don't have to kill them. Oh them. my god! But they believe that her actual death was um, peritonitis because she had a peptic ulcer that uh, ruptured. So that's really mm. what they believe she died of. Um, and they also thought that maybe her death was to love sickness because she had never married. So there were all. <laughs> They're all types a man of is all she needed was a man. That's all she needed. <laughs> it could have worked out so much better for her. Oh, so she, she had a huge funeral. Um, they had a life-size sculpture of her made. They had music composed in her honor. Wow. And I bet, I bet the servant didn't come. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, that person head for the hills. <laughs> And she was actually buried in the same tomb as her, uh, same tomb as her father's teacher, who was that Guido Reni. So she ended. They were. He was a close friend of the family. So yeah. So she had a really big funeral. She did over two hundred paintings. She did fifteen etchings and hundreds of drawings. And so she was very prolific. She was only she only lived to be twenty seven. So, you know, she John, did a lot of painting. You, did you find out if her work is on display anywhere? Let's take a look at her work here. See what we can find here. That one said the Pushkin Hello. Museum in Moscow, the previous one. Yep, yep, that's it's right yep, there. Pushkin, yep, Moscow. <coughs> real this point. one here is the Copper Hewitt Museum. And it says down at the bottom. Virgin and Child, this is 1663. This was a big uh, painting for her, too. I've been the, to that uh, National Museum of Women and, and Arts in Washington. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, definitely a place to go. So you said you went there, Fred? Yeah, my ex was an artist. Oh. I couldn't pass by a museum without going inside. <laughs> That's supposed to be a really nice, you know, I, I've watched a few videos of theirs they've done on women artists and um, it really sounds like good work that they're doing there. I want to comment too in this picture, just the way the mother's looking at the child and mm -hmm. just, it's mm -hmm. um, a lot different than the, like uh, the portraits that men would do in this situation where the mother would be looking out to, like out towards the camp, uh, the camera, yeah. the, the yeah. painter. Does this, do you think this might be Mary and Jesus? Yeah, it's supposed to be virgin yeah, and virgin. child. Yeah, anytime they said that, I think they were referring to Mary. Mary. Here, the Madonna. There's another yeah. one, too. Now the Madonna. Looking Everybody down. painted this one. Everyone. That was, you know, <laughs> first thing you had to paint. Right. Now this, <laughs> one of the Judith pictures, uh, I mean, sorry, paintings. Hmm. <laughs> Off with his head. Um, the, hair, the hairstyle on the and, woman. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a head. Is that the face of? That's that's the hollow fernies. This is a. Um, yeah. Is it a, a Greek mm. or a Roman story? Mm -hmm. Another one here. Here's another one. This is interesting. Hmm. Of course, she's wounding her Ouch. thigh. Ouch. I know. That's a good one. She got, well, yeah, she's going in for it. <laughs> oh. Little something. Not too sure. She's looking to collect workman's comp. Yeah, really. I'm tired of working. <laughs> Probably a uh, kind of story, too, maybe. And Sarani, she did, she also painted 13 public altarpieces. So these are, you know, those big altar pieces. She did 13 of those. So people really liked her work. This is from 1659. Can we see some of uh, the notation on that one? Oh, you want to see it? <laughs> oh, this one or the one before? The music notation. Oh, the me oh, yeah. Class. <laughs> That's right. Fred went to my how to read music class. <laughs> I see all the little dots there. Yeah, he's like, oh, my God, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at the clothes. 
the draping here. Oh, and there's, um, yeah, there he is again, his head. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, ink and wash on paper. Now this is interesting because the woman has the sword here. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's what's his name, Albrecht. Um, Albert. He did. He did prudence, this one too. Prudence, justice, and oh, there were the four of them. Uh, oh. Can't remember the fourth one? No, no senior <laughs> moment again. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one, St. Joseph with the infant Jesus. Baptism of Christ. This is a big one. Mm -hmm. Finding of Moses. This one's cute. This portrait. <laughs> All right. So that is Sarani. Next one up. Has anyone heard of her? No. Maria, Maria, Sabaya, Marion. 1647. So she was German naturalist and illustrator. Oh, she's really cool. She was into painted flowers, fruits, bugs, and other filth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. I don't write this stuff. Well, in those so, periods, there were people didn't have different sites. They were just naturalists. They didn't have, you know, they didn't have entomologists and right. They didn't have that. And she was really she was instrumental in the etymology uh, field. Uh, she went to South America in the 1600s. She, was, she went down there 100 years before Darwin. Wow. wow. <laughs> she was down there, uh, you know, you know, going and, you know, discovering the life cycles, the metamorphosis of insects. So she did all the insects. So let's take a look at her stuff. Her stuff's fun. This is uh, one of her uh, meta metamorphosis books that she wrote. It could be cacao, even. maybe, I don't know. Sorry, that might, oh, yeah, that might be, yeah, South America. Mm -hmm. This is a portrait of her, 1700. A pile of books next to her, all her bug books. And other filth. <laughs> and other filth. <laughs> this is... The Caterpillar's Marvelous Transformation in Strange Floral Food. Hmm. I'm glad we've changed the name to Gardening and Entomology. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was out there in that filth today. Yeah, you were in the filth. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, this looks like a gypsy moth. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. The caterpillar, like a woolly worm. We have where I live. Like yeah, those worms. kind of fuzzy, icky those ones. Bugs been around a long time. Okay. Some wow. more. Very detailed. This is uh, looks like something by Audubon, except no birds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she uh, she was into bugs. You know, she let's see, she was into them. Oh, from the beginning of her life. At 13, she raised silkworms. So I she wonder, was into bugs. I wonder if those pictures made it, it into biology books because they're so unbelievably detailed. Oh, yeah. I wonder yeah, if Darwin quality. knew about her. You thought, what did you say, Christine? If Darwin knew about her. Mm. Um, well, he David did, Ad Admiral. just didn't happen to mention her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He saw the books. He goes, "Hey, these look good. I'm gonna put my name on them." <laughs> oh, detailed, very. Uh, David Attenborough. He said that she was um, one of the more significant contributors to the field of ed entomology. 
Hmm. Just by just what she has, you know, her her pictures. That one's nice. Just, I like that. That is pretty. Who knew filth could be art? <laughs> I know. And I'm wondering if these are scientific terms she's using over here, or did she create these terms? Let's... You see in the left here? Are those scientific terms? I wonder. I think so. Yeah, yeah she's got all kinds of them here. Mm -hmm. Spiders. Spiders, ants, and hummingbird on a branch of guava. Look at all the little ants here. <laughs> what what were the years? What years was she? 1647 to 1717. Okay. Okay. So she published two volumes on just uh, a whole series on caterpillars. <laughs> She uh, discovered a lot about bugs. Oh, this is, I don't know what this is here. Eggs or is it a, that's the bug. Hmm. It's nice work. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Her work is beautiful. Definitely like you'd see in a biology textbook. <laughs> yeah. So detailed. Oh, I know. It's so detailed. And it's, uh, she has an artistic eye. You can see it. She has an artistic eye. For the way sure. She's doing it. For sure. <clears throat> Looks like the, some kind of, I don't know, is that guava? Is that, or is that, looks like guava a pear. Or pomegranate or something. Pomegranate. I don't know. It's shaped. Wow. Wow, this is And she she's matching the colors too. She's doing all these different color palettes. There's a frog. It would be wonderful to have an idea of how many hours it took to do this. It's just unbelievable. Amazing. Yeah, so that's a interesting lady. Mm -hmm. Some interesting art. <laughs> oh, there it said before Darwin. Yep, 100 years before Darwin, Darwin went down mm -hmm. there to study. Hopefully she must, was must have been pain, pain, painting with oils by then, do you think? Um. Oh I yeah, so. they're they're yeah. painting in oil. Yeah. yeah, they're definitely painting in oil. Um, Hopefully, she left some notes for Darwin so he could see what a talent she was. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right, next one up. <clears throat> port another port. Well, they're all portrait painters. All the women, pretty much. Uh, but she was a master in miniatures, pastels, and oil paintings. So she kind of dabbled a little bit. She did promote women artists. She was elected to the Royal Academy. First female artist to set up a studio for his students at the Louvre. That's a big deal. Uh, yeah. That's not something that you, know, mm -hmm. you could just, you know, walk up and get. Yeah. So she was a master at this. Um, and the fact that she had students like that at that level to be studying at the Louvre and everything was pretty big mm -hmm. for her time. Yeah, that was common in those days for people to go to the gap, go to the museum and paint right in front of the painting. Right. Oh, here's here, here she is. Yeah, now this one. This looks a lot like the one um, Braun. Yeah, right. and I've seen this. I've mm -hmm. seen this painting that I thought it was hers, but it could be it's her instructing, but somebody else painted it. Could be. 
That's how I, because when I saw this, first saw this, her name was mentioned and I thought, oh, she must have painted it, but I guess it's somebody else painting her with her students. Right. This is at but the in Metropolitan. Her style, in her style. In her style, yeah. They have Love her name hat. down here, though. Love that hat. I know, the hat's great. And there's her self portrait, miniature. Remember, she did the miniatures, the little tiny, tiny paintings. Wow, look at the um, shadows yeah. on the wall. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's pretty good. Great outfit. Wow. And the bird. And she, um, <clears throat> she would uh, definitely put in like fashion into her paintings, as you can see here. This is a perfect example. She could showcase that her ability to do fabric. This is so vivid. This it's like it's got rhinestones or something down here. Yeah, and gold. Gold, yeah, probably gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she usually would paint with the 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 person that she's doing the portrait looking right at you. And she would do low necklines. That was something else she was known for. Usually you wouldn't do that with women. Mm. Quite a hair piece here. Yeah. Reminds me of Marie Antoinette mm. last year. Yeah. <laughs> the Madam Alexis. Oh, great hat. That's a great hat. And I see what they're saying about the plunging necklines. They really are. <laughs> Another great hat. These hats are crazy. Yeah, the bouffant hairdos. <laughs> and the bouffant, very bouffant. Oh, my. Lots of, lots of hairspray. Lots of powder. Didn't they use powder? Uh, I mean, did, the, did the women do powder, too? I mean, I know the guys did powder at this time, right? The only way you could get your hair. And wigs, and wigs were common, too. Yeah. But did women do the powder thing? Does anybody know? Don't know. Like, like you know, the men did the, you know, the powder. Yeah. It almost looks like her hair is powdered the way it looks. Mm -hmm. Now this is painting of her by her pupil. One of her students. This is a comedian. Like he the looks, neck the cravat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He looks like a comedian, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. But that, you know, that really looks very, um, I think it's his hairstyle looks very kind of modern, more uh, That's modern. That's what I was thinking too, yeah. Because what year is this? This is very, um, he had a very hip haircut. Yeah, it just looked like he came from a Beverly Hills parlor <laughs> someplace. It is. It's, isn't it unusual? It looks, it's, um, doesn't, it doesn't seem to fit. There's no date on this one. I can't see the date. This is in Harvard Art Museums. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the uh, the full full scale picture that we saw this one earlier. I remember the hat. Mm -hmm.
And this is, uh, oh, this is a copy of a pastel drawing. This must that be one of, her, one of her students. That is so amazing that it's pastels. I'm, I know. If you work with pastels, that just looks unbelievable. And I'm trying to, can anyone tell if it's actually, is it velvet or what do you think the fabric is? Mm -hmm. It says, I believe to be a copy after a pastel painting. Oh. After. Now, this is a great shot. Look at that satin or velvet. Oh, my God. Yeah. Velvet, satin. I, I just can't believe wow. the, how they can get that detail. Mm. That looks a little more modern, too. That does, too. Yeah, the hair. <laughs> She's got the big bow. Oh, 17, gonna, 17. What? I'm going to go get one of those. I, I'm going to teach when I teach. Yeah, I you got to put, put, you do that. I'm put it, and I think Donna, I, I think, I think you should get a big bow and put it right next yeah, I think if you're teaching these art classes, I think you need we, to start looking like the paintings. We, we have to do a, a, a bow. Up as. <laughs> dress up as your favorite. Yeah. Have a bow day, and Fred, you'll and have to wear a bow on the side of your head. Or I'll get a rough. I'll wear there a rough. There you go. <laughs> like Rembrandt. This is a big hair. I mean, this is really <laughs> a lot of big hair in this uh, in this seventeen uh, hundreds here. There's no such thing as a bad hair day, then. <laughs> no, you just put your hat right on and go. And Throw some powder. And they didn't have hairspray and all the goop. I don't think no. so. That's sort of a fancy. Turning irons, all that stuff. I know. It's like, how do you have hair like that? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, look at is this that guy. the lining of his jacket? That's pretty nice having the lining like that. That looks like he's wearing, a, is that, a, oh, I can't tell if it's a vest. I don't know. Yeah, he's got the lapels pushed back. It looks like it's the lining of his jacket, uh, maybe. I thought it was a vest. Mm -hmm. yeah, probably a, probably a vest, huh? Yeah, very, very right. sharp. I think, I think you're right. Yeah. Now this is 1795. This is very bold mm -hmm. to go out in the red stripe, don't you think? It's a very dandy-ish. Dandy-ish. <laughs> and he looked. This isn't the guy who's the comedian. No. I, well, that's true. Is it the his same guy? I wonder. Though, but his hair's a little. Yeah, his hair's different. The other guy had longer, shorter, longer hair. Longer. That's funny. Is that the comedian? <laughs> this this guy was a, a French professor. Who was? This uh, Joachim uh, guy, the last one was uh, a French professor, public oh, administrator. This, this guy Le here? Joachim, yes. Joachim Le Brin. Now, the other one was Rebs Pierre, the, um, the leader of <laughs> the French <laughs> Revolution. Yeah, he was a politician, French Revolution. Oh, this yeah. guy, yeah, Rebs Pierre, yeah, Rebs Pierre, yeah. Well, these are her portraits. On the, the Could be wearing a wig here. <laughs> no. You know, maybe these are just wigs, but boy. But they still they, have they to, look they pretty still, good. They still have to style them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if know. they're wigs, somehow they've gotten curls in them and they must have had some kind of product. Had to. <laughs> some of them were something hair, you know, and they sometimes they use horse hair. And some of, some oh, maybe that's it. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. I think you're right, Cheryl. It's hair. horse hair and horse hair, you know, maybe it's just a lot of poor of... people sold their hair. Mm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you go. All right, the next one up, and Angelica Kaufman, 1741 to 1807, Swiss born, but she worked mainly in England. Now she's a neoclassical painter, one of the founding members of the Royal Academy of Arts in 1768. At first they wouldn't hang her paintings there though, <laughs> but then eventually they did. And she did a lot of, a lot of exhibits. She did do the multi-figure historical paintings also, which were, you know, frowned upon, of course. Donna? Mm -hmm. It seems that the women artists made more headway to get 
um, their work shown than most other professions when women couldn't go to college, when be they couldn't become, you know, do other professions. It's like the artists, this is a long time ago that they were actually able to be recognized and have their things hung. Yeah. I mean, some of them were able to get recognized and uh, make a living. Mm -hmm. You know, they were able to support their families. Many of them were from artistic family, artist families. Like yeah, fathers. it helps when dad or uncle, a lot of then these people do. Yeah. yeah, they had, you know, because then they could learn in the studio. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, once the art, you know, institution started opening up, then, you know, then that's why we see a lot more female artists coming down the pipe as time moves on. You see a lot more because now they're going to college and, you know, majoring in art or something like that. So Angelica Kaufman, this is a self-portrait of her. Look at the eyes. Oof. David Garrick, 1764. Now, her father was uh, Joseph Kaufman. He was uh, an Austrian mur muralist and a painter. So he traveled a lot, and she would go with him hmm. as his assistant. So she got to go and go to different countries. Here's Mary Tisdale, Dublin. Oh, and I just noticed the sheep over here. Yeah, very pointy toe shoes. Are they pointy toe? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're very pointy toe. <laughs> Good eyes. The conjurer. Now this looks like pot, you know, right before Harry Potter. Mm. I was going to say, it looks really Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, it. it does. The wizard. The wizard. Yeah. The conjurer. Oh, this is the younger. This is her. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is an oil. This is in the Metropolitan. Now, she was a child prodigy. This is kind of funny because she could have been going to music too, but um, she could have, she had a good singing voice, I guess, and she could have gone either opera or art. And her family said, "No, there's seedy people in opera. You're going to be an artist." <laughs> so that's what she ended up doing. And when she died, um, it was uh, a, the uh, neoclassical sculptor Antonio Convo Conova uh, designed her funeral, and he designed it based on the funeral of Raphael. Mm. Wow. So it was a fancy funeral. I was just noticing that, oh, that head... This headpiece here is very pretty. I don't know if it's bows or flowers. Oh, here she is hesitating between painting and music. She's telling her story. Stay away from this. Stay away from those seedy people. Did you look at that score for notation? Yeah. <laughs> what is that notation there? Yeah, really. Are you? Have you been traumatized by that class? <laughs> I think, I think so. All I, I all I see is music now. All I see are notes now. Oh boy, we're gonna have to have a support group, I guess, to follow up with that class. I don't know. Fred, does that mean you're playing music now? He's obviously traumatized. <laughs> oh boy. Yep, oh, this is her museum in Austria. Wow. Look at the snow over here. So Donna, does she have that whole building is just her stuff? Or is she on display there? Um, 
does it say? You no, know, it says it's the a an Angelica Kaufman Museum. Well, then that's pretty be her. amazing for a woman her. to have her own museum. Yeah. She wow. was uh, well liked. Here's another one. Look at the way she uses the light. The light, see. yeah. It's just yeah. amazing. Another one, this is in Houston. The Judgment of Paris, 1781. This is in Puerto Rico. Oh, I like this one. Look at the storm coming. The volcano erupting. Or a volcano, yeah. What year was that? 1785. Hmm. You notice a lot of paintings with volcanoes erupting. It makes you wonder, you know, back then if there was, you know, some of these volcanoes were just spewing off well, steam. Pliny the Younger, he lived in Pompeii. That's probably, that painting was probably in Pompeii. This mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Um, the I think. The Pliny the Elder died in that eruption, I think. Oh, really? Uh, I oh. think so. I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. It was the younger and the elder, and the elder died in Pompeii. I know Italy has like 15 volcanoes, so. And they're still active, too. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them that are active. And, you know, even in the 1600s, 1700s, you see somebody in the background, you see these eruptions going on, and they probably were you know, erupting. The state is unknown for this one. Mm. You can definitely see her historical paintings that she's doing here. What's, in this. Oh. What is the name mm -hmm. of that one, Donna? I can't see the names of the paintings. Oh, I'm sorry. Christ and the um, Samaritan. Samaritan, Samaritan woman at the well. Mm. 1795. Pretty large. Is that a relative. volcano in the middle? <laughs> what would you say? Large what? I mean, it's relatively large painting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Looking at the size here. Yeah. This is in, in Munich. Oh, this is cute. I think these are, this family is uh, oh. La Lady Di's family. The Spencers, yes. Because uh, Althorpe was also, you know, all those names are part of her family. Yes, they look familiar. Yes, yes, that's her, her uh, relatives from way back. Good I think either. her brother is an Althorpe or something. Yeah, I remember Althorpe. Yeah. Yeah. Good eye putting that all together. <laughs> all right, let's go to the next one here. Suzanne Valadon, 1865 to 1938. Well, that's pretty modern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's pretty modern. Um, her mother was a prostitute and she became a circus <laughs> child and she performed in the circus. <laughs> What country, Donna? Is this French? <laughs> oh, she is from. Um, hmm. Good question. Um, I would have to go check on that one. Um, oh, oh, thank you. So she had a fall and she had to leave the circus and she became a model. It all makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> it's coming together. But she models for everyone from Renoir, Renoir to Picasso. I mean, she was. You know, Cezanne, I think she did. She modeled for him. I mean, she was modeling for everyone. And her son, Maurice, the trio, he actually became more famous than her. 
But some people say that she, they think her paintings were better than his. Yes, she's French. French, okay. It's a photo, actually. Yeah, this is a photo of her. I mean, she was pretty. You can see how she modeled. Wow. This is her dancing in the, this is her modeling. Yeah, she was Susan and one, uh, it depended on the artist. They had different names for her. This is her joy of life. This is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Now she did a lot of nudes. Wonder if that was therapy from her mother's profession. <laughs> Could be. Well, she, might she, probably... <laughs> she might have just felt more comfortable with the human body. Because of I, 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 yeah, I think people. it was. Yeah. yeah. I think she just was comfortable with it. It wasn't a big deal. And she yeah. just showed she just showed women in their natural bodies, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, different because, you know, different than the way the men were painting women. This is another self-portrait of hers in Houston. You know, I can see her son, Ertillo, Ur I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some of his work, I can see um, that uh, his impressions from his mother's work. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of the sort of near the beginning of Impressionists. Right, exactly, yeah. The erotica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she liked to do the nudes. Um, she worked primarily in oil paint, oil pencils, pastels, and red chalk. Yeah, it looks mostly like pastels. Yeah. Notice she isn't, it's funny, uh, we've been seeing so many of these gorgeous gowns. Well, there's her son. There yeah. he is. And instead, she does the nude. She doesn't have to paint all those crazy clothing, you know, all the. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> That's true. Much easier. Now that looks like Matisse. That does, yeah. Maybe she knew him because that sure looks, you know, the his most, one of his most famous, the the nude is actually laying in the opposite direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and like you say, it's relatively modern. It was 1924. Oh, yeah. She's definitely in the Impressionist, post-Impressionist era. Oh, pretty. That's pretty. Boy, she really switched to go to flowers. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, well, one minute we have these beautiful flowers and then everyone's naked. <laughs> yeah, she has real extremes. Maybe the next one will be naked people with oh. flowers. Oh, oh there, there we go. go. Oh, just <laughs> like the with the with naked woman Now, these the were flowers. later. These are 1928. You know, I'm wondering if, if the, well, were the nudes earlier? Must have been. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. Except not naked, but people with flowers. That looks like her. I think these are self portrait. Yeah, it is self portrait. Yeah. She definitely did flowers. Yeah, 36. <laughs> they go in nude. Uh, you go, baby. No data now. There's another portrait. This was by Renoir. Um, Renoir. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice one. Wait, that's really unusual. Two of the track. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the style is different. Traveling in the it? right circles. What's the Donna? Can you see the year on the one you just showed? Yeah, that one. Um, oh, this is by Henri. Um, what did you want? The date is eighteen eighty five. Yeah, I was just curious. Eighteen eighty five. Toulouse Lautrec. Yeah, there's Toulouse. so much color in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one's really pretty. The Hangover. Hmm. Is that Lutrec? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And apparently yeah. she, there she is, hungover. <laughs> because he did. She looks hungover. 
Yeah, he does so many in bars, you know, and oh mm-hmm. who's that? Oh uh, when, her, Byron. That's her. Byron Moore. Byron Moore. Oh, what a difference. She did style. model a lot. She modeled a lot. Yes. <laughs> Painted and she modeled a lot. She got around, I think. <laughs> No judgment. Oh, she lived into the 20th century. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She, uh, she, as they would say, had a good run. Yep. Right. <laughs> and a pretty ripe old age. She lived quite a while. Yeah. Too. Yeah, she did. Uh, <laughs> no, no tragedy like some of these others. <laughs> well, Johnny, we're sadly you're... at the end of our hour. We have so much fun with these. Uh-huh. You see my Eiffel Tower? Yes, yeah. that looks really nice. Yeah, Boy, that I looks got, really I good. To figure out how to edit it to get the whole thing in there. <laughs> it's pretty tall. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yep, it sure is. Put it on your on your phone and shrink it. Yeah, I I just then, need to do it in my computer. It's on my computer. I just have uh, to shrink it. But uh, I was doing a a presentation about a French woman, and I I wanted to have a that background. I didn't have time to alter it. <laughs> oh boy. Donna, well, is there a, a women artists three? You know, I, I have so many of them now. <laughs> Every time I go to look for a few more, I find, you know, tons of them. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, we've got to get Georgia O'Keefe. And you've done. Some she work. was actually in the first class. The first oh, class. Uh, okay. Yeah. The first okay. class, we didn't make it all the way through all of them. And uh, Okay. Did you then do I just Mary kind, I kind of just left it. Yeah. She, Mary was in that one. In the first? Oh, okay. In the first one, yeah. Fred, I and, like your background. And, um, and Savage was there. Um, what's her name? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Now this this isn't my yeah. apron from the studio. This is my apron from the kitchen. From the kitchen, okay. <laughs> hey, you, were, you weren't out in the filth, you mean? The filth? Yeah, I tease my girlfriend. I'm always wearing the apron because I'm either cooking or I'm in the garden. <laughs> You've been trained very well, Fred. Mm-hmm. What is your background, Fred? Is that your work of art? It's my work of art, yeah. He did that on his tablet. Oh, wow. I did that on my iPad Pro using uh, Procreate. Great wow. app. He's, he's going to do cool. a demo. I think I this think, is it Saturday. Yeah. He's going to show it. Great. Yeah, I think it's um, Saturday. I'll, I'll do a little demo and I'll yeah. show. Well, wow, yeah. very avant garde. I, I love it. What, nice. what time on Saturday? It's the uh, top top drawing apps. Oh. And I, I just show like, you know, different apps. I'm doing this whole digital art thing. There's going to be a digital art class coming up too. And, I'm not good um, enough yet. <laughs> oh, I'm not either. I'm more of an abstract artist. <laughs> Don't ask me to draw faces. I'm kind of like Fred. <laughs> actually, that's why I like Hilma. Of actually, Quint. yeah. Uh-huh. That's why I like her. She reminds that's me That's why of- I like Kandinsky. <laughs> I, oh, yes. I love Kandinsky. That's I can understand I that. Yeah, father of abstract read. art. Yeah, Just throw a I bunch would... of geometric you know, shapes together and you're yeah. good to go. Exactly. She reminds me of a slightly contemporary doodles in color. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what yeah, time so... you, do you know what time your class is Saturday, Donna? That... I think it's at, let me see where it's at. Oh, he here. put it in. Harry put it Did in. Did he put it's it in? Harry. Okay. What a great Thank you. Guy. Top drawing, is that it? Oh, oh yeah. no. <laughs> yes, top drawing. Okay. What time is that? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, We're going to talk about what what time is it? Eastern. (laughs) When does he start? Three hours. Oh, oh, Eastern. Yeah, three hours. One o'clock. Yeah, it'll be one o'clock your time. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, uh, I've been uh, doing this um, class on drawing apps, and um, I found out that Fred knows Procreate. And so I thought, oh, why don't you come in and just do a little something to show us yeah. a little bit about it? And then you maybe you can do a. App, you can buy Procreate for 10 bucks. I know. I have it on my iPad. $10. The thing great. is just, when you think about people pay $500 for Adobe or something, you oh, can I buy know. this program for $10. It's amazing. Exactly. And Fred, it, you, you know. Are you going to show more art, Fred? I uh, mean, of my stuff? Yeah. Yeah, probably a few. I, I, I'm just going to. Do, I'll add I'm to my do a little deck. bit of basics of how the program works, and then I'll right. show some other pieces. Yeah, that'll be good. And then maybe we can work up to do an appropriate class. That'd be fun. 
Yeah. Are you going to do a part three, women? In Probably. There? Okay. <laughs> <Got him. laughs> we have yeah, so we many. didn't get to LeBrun even. Oh, that was in the first class we did, LeBron. Oh, you you weren't okay. there. Yeah, I don't think you were uh, um, right. around when we did. Yeah, Maybe you ought to repeat a couple from the first class. I know. It. We should. Because there were some doozies in there. And they made a <laughs> movie about her life. Yeah. Oh, definitely. There's been a few of them here. Um, you know, definitely that have had um, Carrington. She had the. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. She's the one. Was she the one that committed suicide? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think she is. Um, but yeah, so there's, yeah, there's been movies made. So it's been an Leon, interesting Leonora. Crowd. All right. Well, I guess I should let you guys go. I feel like I'm holding you hostage here. <laughs> Donna, can I ask you afterwards, can I ask you a question about how you did your, your slide, your sites? Oh, yeah. No problem. Because I tried today and I'm still having trouble. So I wanted to see how you loaded them. Okay, so we missed a few ladies here. I can just show you real quick some of them here. We'll have to uh, we'll have to visit these ladies again. So did you, you made oh you made slides out of all these then? Um, yeah. So every single one was a slide, and that's mm -hmm. what you were showing us slide after slide. Yeah. So and then is, I and then I was so showing you uh, um off the web. Oh, so okay. The, that's the what I wanted to ask how you did that. How are you yeah, going back no and forth problem. to the web? We can spend a few seconds, a few minutes after okay. we're done here. Okay, thanks, so, Donna. Thank you, everyone. It's been fun having you here tonight. I always enjoy okay. hanging thanks. out with it you guys. <laughs> uh, you can other classes. Uh, Fred, there's how to read music for beginners or just curious. That <laughs> 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 you been traumatized. Um, we have famous women in art history. The first version tonight was the second version, and it looks like there might be a third version due to popular demand. And we have uh, the life of Leonardo da Vinci we've been doing. We've been doing the life of Chihuly, if you're interested in other artists. And of course, on the music side, we've been doing Beethoven, Bach. We have Claude Bowling on Monday coming up. A mixture of, he's a jazz, French jazz pianist with a mix of jazz and classical. It'd be fun to do. Um, we'll be getting an email with some class notes and um, you'll uh, notes about the ladies we talked about tonight will be in the email. And also you can put in any uh, class suggestions you may have. You can invite friends to classes by on your mobile device or on the website, click the button to invite a friend. And of course we have our help at getsetup.io email, which is good for not only just support, but if you want to host an interest group, if, you, if you're interested in art, music, or gardening, or filth, you can let us know that you want. We should say we want an interest group in filth. <laughs> Norman will be like, what? What is that? If you want to suggest new classes or if you want to share an organization with us, you can give us their name. And of course, you can always get the recordings at the end. So you guys have a great night. Okay. And we'll Bye. see you next Bye. time. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. So fun. <laughs> I learn I'm learning so much, Donna, because it's history, it's art. Mm -hmm. you know, there's it's just there's just so much. It's just amazing. And I'm glad yeah. you're enlightening. It's so encouraging to see that women were actually allowed to do be something besides just be at home, you know, from right. Yeah. From, it's from, it is interesting seeing the 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 female side of the art history has been oh, interesting. Really? Amazing. And now I'm wondering about on the music side. I, I need to do some digging. It's a little bit harder yeah. though on music, I think, oh, because sure. um I might do some research and see if we can dig up um at least one on women composers. <laughs> I would think a, a Google search or a Wik well a Wikipedia search yeah. of early yeah. women. There composers. are some that um actually wrote under a me men's name. So. Oh yeah. I mean, they were doing that in the 20th century, in the yeah. 19th century. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll probably do that. That'll be fun to have um, yeah. a little mixture there. So, um, all right. Well, uh, you know what, Christine, I'm going to send you a link and we can okay. hook up real quick because we're still okay. live streaming. Okay. Thanks, Donna. So everyone have a good night. We'll see you next time. Bye. Take care. Good seeing everyone. Are you sending bye -bye. it to my, um, which, which account? Your uh, Skype. Slack. Skype. Yep. Slack. Skype.
Is it? Is it? Oh, Slack. That's right. I'm Slack. kidding. Though. Okay. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> the wrong program. All right, got. It's okay. Night, everyone. <laughs>